Good morning and welcome to this week's Choose That You. We are in a series looking at the lessons we as leaders have learned during this lockdown time. When I reflected on the things I've learned, I realized just how each of the previous devotions impacted me and even actually convicted me. So I will do a quick reflection on them, sharing what it meant to me. In week one, Dave spoke about the feeling of losing control, as if the world is losing control. You know what this made me think? Was I really asking, God, are you still in control? I think I had to be honest with myself in that moment. I wasn't asking that. The one thing I was actually asking was, God, why am I no longer in control? In week two, Lungi spoke about God creating us and knowing us inside out. All our shortcomings and insecurities. This lockdown caused me to feel great insecurity around my job. I felt like my job was redundant. Like I'm not useful to the ministry anymore. I felt so insecure. And my identity rested on my ability to perform my work clearly. Holiday clubs and missions are my time to shine. And when that was taken away felt so inadequate. What really moved me about week two was when Lungi said that God knows that we are just human and he does not expect 100% or perfection from me. In week three, Dave spoke about what is most important and what we invest our time and effort in is evidence of that. Tough times have a way of revealing what our priorities are. This convicted me If Jesus is the most satisfying thing in my life, then why do I feel inadequate when I cannot do enough for him? Is it because my validation is in my performance or because I have a deep underlying insecurity rooted in the one thing I always felt like I could control? My high work ethic. Many of you can vouch that I can be quite militant when it comes to running things like holiday club. Even Dave told me once, I should relax and just have some fun. But you know what, to be honest, I struggle to do that because getting it just right means clearly more to me than I realized. In week four, Alicia spoke on thriving versus surviving. See, living alone as a single person in lockdown means that I'm pretty much isolated during this time and I love it I enjoy my own space and I don't get bored the thing is though I start pushing others away even more and go into extreme isolation avoiding messages video calls going out even when I get an opportunity I avoid all of those things I immerse myself in my work or studies even using those things as an excuse And even in times, can you believe this, avoid playing games because I would be too scared that someone may be online and I would have to talk to them. I have forgotten the life that comes with community. I have forgotten to reach out to others and even forgotten that my extrovert friends are struggling and they don't know how to do this. It revealed a deep sense of selfishness within me and perhaps a fear that I would have to pretend in front of them. See, this was reinforced in week five when Dave reminded us that we were designed for connection, you know, relational beings, and that we want authentic, deep relationships without pretend. Sebastian in week six spoke about how the small events in our lives form who we are. And even this convicted me. Did I build my life on my own hands or on Jesus? I'd like to believe Jesus. But if it really was Christ, then why would my identity be challenged during this lockdown? Dave has also encouraged us to confess to one another, getting real with God, going there, not avoiding our insecurities. So that is what I'm doing this week confessing to my brothers and sisters in Christ. Because the one overall thing that I have learned during this lockdown time 
is the fact that I have often forgotten that I'm loved even in my weakness. My worth, identity, and ability to be loved is not rooted in my own performance, but is rooted instead in the work of Christ, who reconciled me to God through his death. He took away all my failures and shortcomings, and they are no longer barriers between God and me. I don't want to wear my Zoom suit anymore. I'm even wearing sweatpants right now. (laughs) You see, throughout the six weeks, I was convicted. And it is easy for me to feel like, man, can I get anything right? How can God even want to put up with someone like me who clearly messes up literally all of the time? Then Father's Day came along, and I remembered a story told by this one guy, Nicky Gumbel. His young daughter came to him and asked him, Dad, why do you love me? And he just looked at her and responded, I love you because I love you. Isn't this beautiful? That's the picture we get of God. It would be foolish for me not to trust the almighty, all-knowing, holy, just, loving, living God who holds the whole world in his hands and who cares about all the details of my life and provides so faithfully every day. So I'm giving up control, choosing to give up control and letting Jesus control my life around me. He knows what is happening and sees the bigger picture. In fact, everything that happens in our lives, everything, like Sebastian said, God will use to make us stronger and better, teaching us reliance on him, not on ourselves, so that our foundations can be solid, better and stronger. So that even in a time like this, We can thrive instead of just survive. Dave mentioned that we had a choice. We could choose to believe what we were feeling. Or we could choose to believe the truth. So since my emotions can change like the weather. I'd rather hold on to something more stable. This is why I choose today. Every day. To believe the sure promises of God. And he reveals those promises to me regularly as I spend time in his word. Even when I fail or struggle to sin or struggle with sin, God is with me. Even when I feel inadequate, he still loves me and thinks the world of me. I mean, he saved me while I was still his enemy. His love is not dependent on how well I serve him or how often I get it right. Even if I cannot do one more thing for God for the rest of my life, he would still be proud of me and he would still love me. Now God is showing me that I'm not loved because of how great I can serve him, but because he just loves me. So if you are feeling like I was during this week, and can relate to any of the things I shared, then I'm also calling you to do what I did. Confess to others. Confess to God. Remember his promise and choose to believe the truth, not to rely on your rollercoaster emotions like I do. He speaks to us through his word. You know what you will find it, if you search for it. If doing all this is hard, which it is, then today I want to leave with you the sure promise of scripture. God is not a man that he would lie, nor a son of man that he would change his mind. Does he speak and not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? Heaven and earth shall pass away. But my words, says God, will not pass away. If we are faithless, he will remain faithful, for he cannot deny himself. 
This is who God is. He cannot change. God says to you today, just like he said to me, I know you fully, inside and out, your strengths and your weaknesses. And I still love you deeply. Trust me, for I am faithful not because you serve me perfectly. I am faithful because I am God. Thank you.